on a brilliant summer day near Santa Barbara last week. A group of friends got together. This was not your typical receiving line. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, better known as Harry and Meghan, are definitely big huggers. It was a meeting of an exclusive club. Oh, it's good to meet you. And one that none of them wanted to join. Most of the parents here have lost a child, directly or indirectly, as a result of exposure to online social media. Harry and Meghan are trying to give them, and parents like them, some place to turn for help. It's called the Parents Network, in association with the couple's charitable Archwell Foundation, and officially launches today. I'm so, so happy you're here. Thank you. Megan herself knows a thing or two about online bullying. And how do you do? And of course, her husband Harry is no stranger to that either, or to unspeakable grief. The central topic is the loss that these families have suffered. Stories that need to be shared mm -hmm. because the parents who are listening who have not suffered a loss think that they couldn't. But they could. They certainly could. And that's, I think, one of the scariest things that we've learned over the course of the last 15, 17 years that social media's been around, and more so recently, is the fact that it could happen to absolutely anybody. I mean, we always talk about, in the olden days, if your kids were under your roof, you knew what they were up to. At least they were safe, <laughs> right? And now mm. they can be in the next door room on a tablet or on a phone and can be going down these rabbit holes. And, and before you know it, within 24 hours, they could be taking their life. Our kids are young. They're three and five. They're amazing. But all you want to do as parents is protect them. And so as we can see what's happening in the online space, we know that there's a lot of work to be done there. And we're just happy to be able to be a part of well, you change hope for good. That when your children ask for help, someone you know, is, is there to, to give it, uh, you know, if you not know, to... If you know how to help. If, mm. well, thank you. At, th at this point, we've got to the stage where almost every parent needs to be a first responder. And even the best first responders in the world wouldn't be able to tell the signs of possible suicide. Like, that, that is the terrifying piece of this. You can't tell this story, everybody. People don't understand. It's something Donna and Chris Dolly know all too well. Their 17-year-old son, CJ, died from suicide after what they believe was depression fueled by social media use. But your son had a demon in his bedroom. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yes. We had no idea what happened to our son. You know, he had a beautiful car. He worked and, and did that. He had a job he liked. Sisters but, that loved know, him. Loved Parents that adored him. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he was happy. He was a happy kid. And like so many parents in their place, the Dollies say a factor in their son's depression and death was his smartphone, a device designed to be so addictive that he couldn't put it down, not even in the minutes before he died. He still had it in his hand, the phone. That's how addicted he was. He couldn't even kill himself without posting about it first. And like the Dollies, it's often impossible for parents or anyone else to see that someone was so deep in despair that they'd consider taking their own life. Meghan Markle has been there, as she told Oprah Winfrey in 2021. Look, I was really ashamed to say it at the time and ashamed to have to admit it to Harry especially um, because I know how much loss he suffered. Mm -hmm. But I knew that if I didn't say it, that I would do it. And I, I, just didn't, I just didn't want to be alive anymore. You had uh, an, an experience that connects you to these, these families. And I see you touch your husband's <laughs> hand in just the way I knew uh, that you would be looking after each other if I went places. But mm. the connection that you have with people is they know you you had suffered too, personally. Contemplating killing yourself is what suicidal ideation was. And I'm, I'm dancing around this because I can see you're uncomfortable with my even, even going there. Do you? I understand why you are though. I wasn't expecting it, but I understand why you are because there is a, a through line, I think. And 
when you've been through any level of pain or trauma, I believe part of our healing journey, certainly part of mine, is being able to be really open about it. And I you know, haven't really scraped the surface on my experience, but I do think that I would never want someone else to feel that way. And I would never want someone else to be making those sort of plans and I would never want someone else to not be believed. So if, if me voicing what I have um, overcome will save someone or asks or encourage someone in their life to really genuinely check in on them and not assume that the appearance is good so everything's okay, then that's worth it. I'll, I'll take a hit for that. <laughs> this in-person gathering was just for the launch. The Parents Network will meet mostly online. But group facilitator Leora Wolf Prusan says the important thing is what the group will talk about. We're going to stop expecting you to be done with your grief in a year. We're going to stop um, telling you that we're tired of hearing the stories of internet harm. Like We will say your kid's name over and over again because they existed and they mattered and that we know that it wasn't your fault. That's it, right? It wasn't your fault. This happened to you, and now we as a community get to create something with you. Knowing that we're helping others, and, and even if that saves one kid and one family's heartache, that's enough. And these are some of the group's charter members. Taj and Celine Swanson Jensen, whose son Tanner died from an overdose of drugs, pushed online. England was the youngest of... She was the youngest, 14 years old. Brandy and Tony Roberts, who lost their daughter England to suicide after online bullying. And Perla Mendoza, whose son Eli died when a painkiller he bought online was actually a lethal dose of fentanyl. Thank you for being here, but I have to, you know, ask, why would you do this? Why would you do this? A simple answer so others don't have to live what we've lived and will continue to live. I don't expect anything from anyone. This is just a labor of love in honor of my son and all the other children that have lost their lives to fentanyl. This is for the mother who cannot get out of bed, for the dad that won't leave his house. I stand here for them too. I hope that one day when it's my turn to go home, I'll see my son and he'll, he'll tell me, good job, Mama. The idea here is that there is comfort and power in numbers, with the goal, as Harry himself once said, of turning pain into purpose. And the two of you, this is, um, it's a modest beginning. You know, it's not an army of parents no. yet. No. Um, mm -hmm. But what are your ambitions? I think you have to start somewhere. I think the simplest thing mm. that anyone watching this or anyone who's able to make change, to look at it through the lens of what if it was my daughter? What if it was my son? My son or my daughter who comes home who are joyful, who I love, and one day, right under my roof, our entire lives change because of something that was completely out of our control. And if you look at it through the lens as a parent, there is no way to see that any other way than to try to find a solution. Else to see that someone was so deep in despair that they'd consider taking their own life. Meghan Markle has been there, as she told Oprah Winfrey in 2021. Look, I was really ashamed to say it at the time and ashamed to have to admit it to Harry especially. Um, because I know how much loss he suffered. Mm -hmm. But I knew that if I didn't say it, that I would do it. And I, I just didn't, I just didn't want to be alive anymore. You had uh, an, an experience that connects you to these, these families. And I see you touch your husband's <laughs> hand in just the way I knew uh, that you would be looking after each other if I went places, but mm. the connection that you have with people is they know you, you had suffered too, personally. Contemplating killing yourself is what suicidal ideation was. And I'm, I'm dancing around this because I can see you're uncomfortable with my even, even going there. Do you, 
I understand why you are, though. I wasn't expecting it, but I understand why you are because there is a, a through line, I think. And when you've been through any level of pain or trauma, I believe part of our healing journey, certainly part of mine, is being able to be really open about it. And I, you know, I haven't really scraped the surface on my experience, but I do think that I would never want someone else to feel that way. And I would never want someone else to be making those sort of plans. And I would never want someone else to not be believed. So if, if me voicing what I have um, overcome will save someone or asks or encourage someone in their life to really genuinely check in on them and not assume that the appearance is good so everything's okay, then that's worth it. I'll, I'll take a hit for that. This in-person gathering was just for the launch. The Parents Network will... Emma Claire, she was one of a kind. She was our light. She was our world. She was our firstborn. She was on our phone more than we realized. Mm -hmm. We found out that she was being bullied, and it was constant. We even found out that they were pushing suicidal content to her. She loved performing in front of people. Um, you would see her eyes light up. She was on social media anytime she did have her telephone. One night as England was spending time with her friend, they were looking for funny videos on Instagram. And there was this one video of a lady Mimicking. Mimicking self-strangulation. With social media, we thought it was something of ways for our kids to connect, to have fun. We didn't know about the dangers of it. This place brings back a lot of good memories for us. There was a, a social media challenge. He got jumped by several students, and they pulled his pants and his underwear down and took pictures and posted them all over social media. That was a lot. She was always such a creative child. Hi, um, it's Alexis. She loved photography, ceramics, art. I think that her youth was robbed of her because of social media. We noticed that she started losing weight. She was self-harming. And all of this was fed to her through Instagram and social media accounts. When she started playing volleyball, she was just very passionate about it. We decided to get her a phone for middle school because we wanted her to be safe. She started talking to people that we didn't know, offering her drugs on Snapchat. Come to learn out, she had overdosed on fentanyl. 